I feel like I just need to begin this video by saying I am sorry if it's a little bit echoey. The reason for that is I basically have no furniture in this room of my house, so I'm sorry if the sound is a little bit off. I also want to say the fact that I've been wanting to film this video since the beginning of the year. We are April and I'm only just filming it. But that is because many of you will already know if you watch the vlogs that I recently bought my first home and I feel like the buying process completely consumed me and I didn't really have luxury purchases at the forefront of my mind. But now I've moved, I've settled in a little bit, I'm definitely thinking about my next luxury buy. So I thought it'd be the perfect time to make this video and so many of you have requested it. I think when you love luxury, you always have this kind of like never ending wish list. I mean, I know I do and lots of my friends do. I actually have a note which is on my phone, which I often add to, tick things off when I buy them. And it's just a great way to see all of the things that I'm working towards. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything that is on my wish list for 2024, although I say 2024, like I'm not gonna buy all of these things this year. It's kind of on like my long-term wish list as well. And I'd also really like all of you to share with me your wish list in the comment section down below because I think that's always very fun. I love to hear what you're wishing for as well. The first thing on my luxury wish list is to furnish and do all the renovation work on my new home. And it's actually quite funny that last year top of my wish list if you watched that video if you didn't i'll link it down below but top of my wish list was to buy my first house and i'm now filming this video sat in my first ever house can't really believe it quite happened still not over it still wake up every single day like what the hell but i'm so beyond grateful that it did happen i worked towards it for so many years but as you can see, I basically have no furniture. I mean, I do have a little bit of furniture, but the furniture wasn't bought for this property. I'm also having this house extended slightly. I'm doing a lot of renovating work. This wall that you see here is hopefully gonna be gone. So there's a lot going on. So that is at the top of my luxury wish list is to get this place exactly how I'd like it. But this is something that isn't gonna be done overnight. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but I have to say, I'm actually really excited for the entire process. Although maybe ask me that again once the building work starts because everyone has said how stressful that is. Next on the wish list are a number of Hermes bags. As many of you know, I got two of my wish list handbags last year. Still can't really get over it if I'm honest, but I've well and truly caught the Hermes bug and now I want many more. So I'm gonna go through them. If you're not into Hermes bags, this probably will mean nothing to you, but I will insert photos so you know what I'm talking about. But top, top of my Hermes wish list right now is a mini Kelly. I love one so much in black with gold hardware. Seems a little bit boring considering I already have a black Birkin, but I just feel like I would get so much use out of it. And it's so cute. And it's also like completely different in my eyes to my Birkin. However, if I couldn't get it in black because they are so hard to get hold of, like they are like gold dust. I would be happy with it in gold, which is a tan color. I'd love it in either natter or cray, which are very like creamy colors. To be honest, I'd just like it in any neutral, but I'd also be open to it in pink, because I love pink. And I feel like a mini Kelly is such a cute pop of color. Even if I don't wear a lot of color, I feel like you can just kind of put it with any outfit. And I also really like orange, all with gold hardware. However, next on my wish list, or very close behind that, would be a Kelly 25 in Epsom leather, in either gold or natter. And if I couldn't get those colors in a Kelly, I would be so happy with the Minna Birkin 25. I mean, if I got any of those bags, I'd be over the moon, if I'm quite honest with you. I feel like now I have the two colors that I wanted. I'm so open to so many other colors from my mess. Oh, and I'd also, I nearly forgot about this, but I'd also love a Constance with gold hardware in once again, either Cray or Natter. I'd just like to say, if I got one bag in Cray or Natter, I then wouldn't want another bag in the same color. My wish list will change once I get my next bag, if that makes any sense. And fingers and toes crossed, I get an email soon saying I've got a bag that matches my requirements. I mean, how amazing would that be? It's nearly my birthday, so that would be a great excuse for a new handbag purchase. Now let's jump onto a little bit of jewelry because I am the biggest jewelry lover. You already know that about me. I am just like a magpie when it comes to diamonds and gold. Like it is my thing and Hermes bags and to be honest, everything else luxury. 
but the first thing on my jewellery wish list would be a tennis bracelet. I have to say this has been on my wish list for years, to be honest with you. I do actually already own a tennis bracelet, which I'll show you a little bit up close. But as you can see, it is very small. It's pretty, don't get me wrong, but the diamonds are tiny. I would instead love one where the diamonds are a little bit bigger, so it's a little bit more dramatic, a little bit sparklier. However, they're expensive. Like everything else, it costs a lot of money. But that is top, top, top of my jewellery wishes, and I feel like it's something I will have forever. Also sticking with bracelets, something else I would love to get is the Tiffany Lock Bracelet. With the half diamonds, half gold. It's stunning, but the price is just... I just can't. Like, I want it so much but I just can't justify it. Like I have an extension to pay for, you know? Like, I can't be spending that kind of money on a bangle, but it is on my wish list of maybe one day, it may happen, fingers crossed. I also adore, adore the Tiffany hardware collection. I've actually been a fan of Tiffany for so many years. I love their jewelry so much. And I love all of their new collections and I would love to have a whole wrist stack from them. Once again, maybe one day. Another jewellery I would love, and this is to replace some rings that I recently lost, which if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have heard all about this. But I had a pinky ring, loved it so much. Solid gold F with diamonds was on it, like a little F for my name. My friends actually bought it for me for my birthday a couple of years ago. And I recently lost it alongside my Missouri Diamond Eternity Band. And I am so angry at myself because I look after my things so much, like I am so careful with all of my stuff. Everything has a place, everything's kept so nicely. But I think I left those rings on the bedside table of a hotel that I stayed in. And I honestly feel so sad about it and I miss them so much. So I'd really love a pinky ring to replace that. I have seen a few different ones that I like, but I'm not too sure right now. If any of you know any cute pinky rings, please let me know. I was tempted to get the F again. And I still haven't written off doing that. Like my nan actually said that I should do that. But I would also like to get something a little bit new. But I'm just so gutted about that. But you know, I'm trying not to dwell on it. These things happen. Like it's just materialistic stuff. It can be replaced. It's a good excuse to buy some new rings, but I am actually really sad about it. And speaking about rings that I lost, this actually makes me sick. And I've never told you guys about this. I never told you on vlog. I only just recently, as I say, said it on Instagram because I just hoped that I was going to find it and it just made me feel ill thinking about it. But some of you might remember that I want to say about two or three years ago, I bought the Cartier Justin Clue ring. It was the big version with the diamonds. It was a lot of money. I remember buying it thinking, this is so much money for a ring. But I loved it. It looks so cool. I used to wear it on my index finger and it was just such a statement piece of jewelry. But I lost it. I'm just gonna be honest, I lost the bloody ring. I still can't get over it to this day. I think what happened was, I'd left my rings all together on the kitchen counter and then I'd cleaned up and the only thing I can think of was the ring got kind of wedged into a letter and I think it went in the bin and down the bin shoe. But it was only a couple of days later that I realized the bins had gone, they'd been collected. Like I would have rooted through the bin for that ring, but they'd gone. I was hoping when I moved, like when I packed up my apartment, I was going to find it just like in the corner or it was just going to turn up somewhere but it never did even when that apartment was completely empty the ring was nowhere to be seen and the price increases at Cartier mean that that ring is so much more money now as well and I just can't justify rebuying it but I still feel so sick about the fact that I lost that this is kind of looking like I lose a lot of stuff isn't it but I really don't but they are three rings that I lost, God. So something I would love to replace that ring with. I'm probably gonna murder this, but is it Spinelli Kill Colin? I mean, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but I will insert some photos of the rings that this brand does. They are so cool, really different. You definitely don't see them as often, and they're just something I would really love to add to my collection. So I feel like, you know, every cloud has a silver lining and the silver lining to me losing the ring is the fact that I get to buy something to replace it. I mean, that is definitely trying to see things in a positive light. There is actually some more jewelry on this wish list, but I feel like we should move on to handbags just for a little while. The handbag wish list is very small. I mean, other than the Hermes bags we've just gone through, but I very much 
love to kind of focus on Hermes bags now. I'm not saying I will never buy a bag from another brand. I mean, of course I will. There's so many other brands I love, like Celine, Prada, Miu Miu, Dior, lots of different brands. But Hermes for me is just a really great investment. And I really want to focus on buying quality over quantity. You know, there was a time I was buying lots of different handbags. And I don't really want to do that anymore. I just want to kind of focus on the ones that I know are going to last in my collection forever. And also, as I've already said, a great investment. But there are a couple on here that aren't Hermes related. So the first is a Dior bag. And I've not bought a Dior bag since I bought my saddle bag around four or five years ago. Maybe it was five because I definitely bought it before the lockdown. And that was four years ago, wow. But a bag I would really love from them is the small size Dior Lady D Joy. Am I saying that right? I don't know if I'm saying that right or horribly wrong, but I love it. It's so pretty. It does actually come in a few different sizes. I think it's not the mini size, it's the one in between, like the small. I just think it's a great size. It's really cute. I love that it's got this kind of little mini chain on it. I think I'd like it in the cream color, but I'm also open to it in the pink or to be honest, any color. They have lots of gorgeous colors of this bag. I feel like it's a real classic, but kind of like a bit of a cooler take on the original lady bag. I toyed with getting that bag for so many years. I remember when I bought my saddle bag, I remember I couldn't decide between the dual lady or the saddle. Went for the saddle, just thought it like kind of suited me more. But I used to go into Dior so many times and try on the lady and I never bought it just because I felt like it was a little bit too ladylike for me. Like I like to dress a little bit more masculine and a little bit more cool, in my opinion. But I feel like the Lady De Joy, is that how you say it? Is it like De Joy? Anyway, I feel like this bag suits my style a little bit more. I think it's gonna be so fun to wear in summer. And I have to say that is very high on my handbag wish list at the moment. I feel like I'm gonna buy it very soon, truthfully. I feel like it's gonna happen soon because I'm really, really loving that bag. I've also got a beige Chanel classic flap on the wish list. Truthfully, this bag has been on my wish list for years. I mean, I should have bought it five years ago when the prices were half the price they are now. I've mentioned this in so many videos, I don't want to repeat myself, but I'm so over Chanel. Their prices are insane. The quality is rubbish. And I just cannot justify spending nearly £10,000 on a bag that four years ago was half the price. Like, it's just crazy. I just feel like they're taking the mick out of their customers. And I'm honestly so over it but I would be open to getting a beige classic flat pre-love because they're a lot more affordable. If you get a vintage one as well, the quality is usually quite a bit better. But I just feel like for that kind of price, you can pick up things like a Birkin 35, which is a really big size Birkin pre-loved that I would use so much for travel. And I just feel like even though I'd love a Chanel classic flat in beige, it's not really like the top of my list because there's other things I'd rather buy. And as I said, I would love to get a pre-loved Birkin 35. I didn't actually mention the 35 in my Hermes wish list because I don't think I'd ever put that down as a wish, if I'm honest. Like there's so many other bags from Hermes I would prefer to get offered than the 35, but I would love a 35 for traveling. It's just a really big bag. You can kind of chuck everything into it. It can sit on top of my carry-on case. I mean, I know it's very bougie, but I just feel like it would be something that I would have forever. And maybe one day when I had children, it could even turn into a baby bag. I mean, do people actually have Birkins as baby bags? That is so over the top, but maybe, maybe I can start a trend. And speaking of carry-on cases, something that has been on my wish list for years, but I could just never justify buying it. And I'm not saying I will buy it, but it'd be lovely if it was a gift. Hint, hint, Reese, if you're watching this video, I'd love it for my birthday, all jokes aside. I would love a Louis Vuitton carry-on case. I mean, another thing that's so bougie, so extra, so over the top. I also travel quite a bit, so I feel like it would get used a lot. And I would just really love that case, but I don't know if I'd ever really buy it. Maybe, maybe not. I do have my Romoa one, which I also love, but the Louis Vuitton one is just so nice. Now back to jewellery, because there is more of that on the wish list. First up, I would love a pair of Van Cleef Alhambra earrings, like the stud earrings. In, I think they come in three different sizes, like the really mini size, the regular, and then the large. I would like the regular ones. I don't really know what colour. I'm thinking maybe black, 
to match my black onyx bracelet which i don't actually have on right now i've really tried to reduce my wrist stack and just try and keep things a little bit you know low-key i would love a pair of van cleef earrings there's a big thing at the moment where everyone's saying that van cleef is giving them the ick i think there's a lot of people saying this about cartier and hermes like hermes birkins are giving people the ick i mean personally can't relate to the ick of any of those things but i think it's social media like you go on social media and you see these things everywhere like on your for you page on tiktok people doing unboxings on youtube and instagram especially if you're into those things your algorithm will feed you with more so i feel like you kind of get the ick because you feel like everyone has it and you're seeing it everywhere yet truthfully when you go out in real life you don't really see anyone with these things on like you might see the odd person if you're in london and you know in like south of france or somewhere like that you'll see the odd person here and there it's online that it kind of gives you the it because you feel like everyone's doing the same thing and so i do understand that but when i see someone in real life and they have a birkin on have a gorgeous wrist stack or a beautiful pair of earrings it will stop me in my tracks and i will admire them because it's actually so rare i think anyway in my experience that you see people in real life with these things on that's just how i feel about it some of you might not agree and i do also really get the whole thing where people want to be different you know you don't want to be wearing cartier you don't want to wear van cleef because you want to wear something that's maybe been designed for you that's a little bit different and i totally get that and i'm feeling so much more that way myself that's why i love like the spinelli ring and i'm really just open to wearing other pieces of jewelry nowadays but i will still always love cartier van cleef and they do not give me the ick unfortunately at all because if they did they'd save me a hell of a lot of money but yeah i'm not personally getting the ick but i do think they are oversaturated online something else that's been on my wish list for over a year is a new watch and as many of you probably already know i've been after the cartier panther in the medium size with the diamonds the solid gold for so long that watch is a disgusting amount of money and my partner is very into kind of watches he has a lot of knowledge in that department and he is just telling me it's a very bad investment. And that is the only thing that's stopping me from buying it. I mean, maybe the fact that I'm having the roof replaced on my house is also stopping me from buying it. But I love that watch so much. I think it's so elegant. But I just feel like I can't justify the price if it's not going to hold its value. So I would love it, but I don't know if I'll actually ever buy it. And I also do think that is a watch that you're going to see on more and more people. Like I see a lot... Of people wearing that watch online and it is nice to have something that not as many people have i mean don't get me wrong a lot of people have the same watch brand that i currently have but they don't often have it in exactly the same spec where lots of people own that cartier watch and it looks exactly the same i would be open to buying it pre-loved though because they're at half the price if they're a fair few years old and if you get a good one they look pretty much the same um, but at the same time, speaking of watches, I would still absolutely love an AP. If any of you out there that wants to buy me one or AP, you want to gift me one, so happy for that. I would also love a Patek. I'll insert the exact one I'd like. Once again, Patek, if you want to like gift me one, I'm so happy to take them all. All jokes aside, I would love a new watch, but as I mentioned with lots of things in this video, I have some other priorities right now, but it is on my wish list at some point. Another thing that is on here is a new car. And to be precise, the what brand of car, I would love to get a Porsche. Some of you are probably thinking, Frey, you only got your Range Rover, like, well, it's nearly two years ago. Where have those years gone? I do not know. But you're right, I do have a Range Rover. It was definitely one of my dream cars. My dream car is a G-Wagon, you all know that. But it was definitely like such an achievement getting that car. But I think after driving it for the last... 18 months it is a beautiful drive i love it it's so comfortable it's actually really good on fuel you know it's very big you feel very safe in it but the big but that car is devalued so much the insurance is wild they get so easily stolen so no one wants them anymore so i can't even really get rid of it right now which is just great and my insurance is nearly tripled since when I purchased it. It was truthfully a really, really, really bad buy. And I don't want to not Range Rover because I do think they make incredibly beautiful cars that are nice to drive, nice to look at. But it was a bad buy, I'm going to be honest. And I would love, love to replace it with a Porsche. But I'm just not in a position right now 
with the situation I'm in with that car to do that. But maybe one day. I'm looking at anything I've missed off on here. Do you know what else I'd love so much on my wish list is to get my hair done? Look at my roots. There's one other thing on here which isn't materialistic as such. Kind of is, but kind of isn't. But I would love, it might not happen this year, but maybe next year, like the beginning of next year, or maybe even for Christmas. That would be good. But I would love so much, and I'm going to manifest this and like make it happen, but I would love so much to go to Australia to go and see my brother with all of my family. So with my mum, my dad, my sister. I'd love for us all to fly business class, which is very expensive, but it's something I'm going to manifest and work towards. I'd love for us all to go to Australia to go and see my brother. I feel like that would be such an amazing thing to do all together. And hopefully, fingers crossed, that happens. I'd love to make that happen. But that is everything I have written down. I'm trying to think if there's any other things that I've seen or I want. I mean, there are some other small bits. I've seen these YSL heels. I don't know the exact name of them, but they kind of do up around your ankle. So gorgeous. I have actually seen them in store as well. And I feel like I would really, really love those. Although, after getting my last pair of YSL heels, which truthfully I am going to sell because they are the most uncomfortable things I've ever worn in my entire life and I've only owned them for a month and a half. I wore them once, like they need to, they need to go. There's something wrong with them or there's something wrong with my feet but they just don't work together. I feel like after buying those shoes, I should never buy another pair of YSL heels but they're so pretty. And these ones that do it around your leg are so nice. I also really wanted this Loewe vest top. I already have it in black and white. And I saw they did it in grey, but Reese very kindly, by the way, Reese is my partner just in case you're new to my channel today. Um, but he just surprised me with it a couple of weeks ago, which I'm very grateful for. I also am loving the Jimmy Choo Seda pumps. So the open toe version in pink. For summer, with the crystal embellishment around your ankle, stunning. I would love those. They are 10 out of 10. I also love, love, love the oversized YSL sunglasses. You know, they are huge. They've got the big YSL kind of logo on the side. Have tried them on, love them. But for sunglasses, they are very steep in price. Something else, oh my God, something else from Saint Laurent, which is so beautiful, is the Raffia beach bag. You know, I have the leather one. They bought it out in kind of like a Raffia beach version. It's 4K. £4,000 for a bag that is made out of string. I mean, I don't know what it's made out of, to be honest. I just don't see how they can justify that price. Like, it's beautiful, and I've been told it's all handmade, so that might be why it costs so much. But, like, you know, beach bags that are in Primark are often also handmade. They're £15. Why that is 4.5K, I just think the price is crazy but i love it but i actually will not be buying that because it's just ludicrous but still very cute if you've got like a never-ending money pit i would definitely buy it and the last thing i can think of just on the top of my head is you know my gucci heels that i have which i really love them so much i've recently seen that they do a flat version so they don't have a heel on them and you can just kind of wear them every day i mean obviously you can wear the heel every day as well but i am not someone that wears a heel unless i'm going somewhere dressy where the flat version you could just wear out you know going shopping and things like that and they're really really cute but i don't know if i can justify buying the flat pair when i have the heels because they look too similar but they're very nice so that's everything on my list and everything i can also think of off of the top of my head but i just want to say if in the next few months i go on to buy something that i then say i've wanted this for ages yet it wasn't on this list please don't come for me because sometimes i just forget that there is something that i do actually like and something that i want or something i feel like that is missing from my collection sometimes i just spontaneously buy things so if i do say that in a couple of months please don't tell me off anyway i hope so much you've enjoyed this video as i mentioned at the beginning please do write down below all of the things on your wish list because i love the fact that we are a community on here that can share and talk about all things luxury it honestly is my favorite thing ever so tell me what you're working towards tell me what you're wishing for and i will hopefully see you in my next video as always guys thank you so so much for watching if you don't already don't forget to subscribe give this video a big thumbs up follow me on instagram tiktok and all of those good things and i will hopefully see you in my next one lots of love take care bye bye